In this video, I am attempting to show you how to determine the energy of activation of a chemical reaction using Arrhenius equation. The assumption is that you have already studied the rate law, you understand the order of a reaction, you can predict the factors that affect the rate of reaction, familiar with the equation for a straight line y is equals to mx plus b, you are capable of determining the slope of a line, and you also have some understanding of natural logarithms and logarithms to the base 10 and their properties for calculation. We will make a graphical representation of a chemical reaction in terms of the energy changes involved in it. And this is how the graph would look. On the y-axis, I have the energy terms. On the x-axis, it is also called the reaction coordinate or the progress of reaction. The energy of the reactants around 60 kilojoules. Energy of the products about 30 kilojoules. If you use Hess's law, you can determine the enthalpy change for the reaction, which is delta H is equals to sum of the enthalpies of the products minus sum of the enthalpies of the reactants. And in this case, the value is minus 30 kilojoules. It also tells you that this reaction is an exothermic reaction. Now, the reactants in this case, if you mix them, they will not spontaneously change into products. They will remain as reactants under the given conditions. But you can make the reactants change into products if you provide the right quantity of energy. Therefore, the reactants are prevented from changing into the products by what we call an energy barrier. And the number that represents the energy is called the threshold energy. In this case, the threshold energy is 100 kilojoules. So the reactants have to gain energy so that the energy of the reactants will become 100 kilojoules. Then if they undergo proper collision, which means they have the right amount of energy and proper orientation, they may lead to the formation of products. In order to calculate the energy of activation, we need the number threshold energy for threshold energy and the energy of the reactants. If you subtract the energy of the reactants from the threshold energy, we will get the energy of activation. For the forward reaction, the energy of activation will be 100 minus 60, which is 40 kilojoules. And this value is representing the energy of activation for the forward reaction. So when the molecules gain 40 kilojoules of energy per mole, they change into products because the collisions at this point will become effective. We can also calculate the energy of activation for the backward reaction. If you are looking at a reversible reaction, the energy of the products, if you want to change them back into reactants, you still have to provide threshold energy. And in this case, the value of threshold energy for the backward reaction is going to be 40 plus 30, 70 kilojoules. Which means the energy of activation for the backward reaction is more than the energy of activation for the forward reaction or you can say, it's easier to change the reactants to products. You can also say, the products are more stable than the reactants. Now here, what I am attempting to do is determine the value of energy of activation uh, using the Arrhenius equation. So this is a background in terms of how the energy can be represented for a single step reaction. Arrhenius equation written as k is equals to a into e raised to minus ea by rt. k represents the rate constant. It's just, it is determined experimentally. a rep represents frequency factor. is characteristic for a given reaction. ea is the energy of activation. r is the universal gas constant, 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole. Temperature is always measured in Kelvin. If you are given a degree Celsius, you may want to convert it to Kelvin before you solve it. Add 273.14 to degree Celsius, you should get the Kelvin. 
There are two methods for determining energy of activation. The first one we're going to look at is the graphical method. Here, we assume that you have a number of values for the different rate constants at different temperatures, which also implies that the rate constant changes with temperature. We're going to use the equation k is equals to a into e raised to minus ea by rt, which is our Arrhenius equation. Now you want to remove the exponent. For that, we are going to use the logarithmic function or more precisely the natural logarithms ln k is equals to ln a minus ea by rt. So here we have removed the exponent e and this equation now can be compared to an equation for a straight line y is equals to mx plus b. y represent, is represented by ln k, m is the slope of the line which is represented by ea by r and x is 1 over t. So the Arrhenius equation is now compared to an equation for a straight line and if you plot a graph of y versus x and if it's a straight line you can determine the slope. That's what we're going to do. y axis ln k obtained from the value of y x axis 1 over t obtained from the value of x we are getting a straight line here and you can determine the slope of this line using the equation rise over run and here the rise can be calculated from the two numbers for ln k and run can be calculated from the two temperatures 1 over t at the different time intervals and that will give you the slope of the line ea by r the numerical value of ea by r if it's multiplied by the gas constant will give you the value of energy of activation in joules. So if you have different values for k and the temperature at which the k has been determined, you can actually obtain the energy of activation by drawing a graph similar to this. The next method is solving the Arrhenius equation to determine the energy of activation for two different temperatures. The equation is already known. We are going to rearrange it after taking natural logarithms. So this equation is the same as the equation we had seen a moment ago. Ln k1 is equal to ln a minus ea by rt and we are going to call it equation 1. So k1 is the rate constant at temperature t1. The same experiment is going to be performed at temperature t2 and we will write the equation like this ln k2 or k2 would be the rate constant at the temperature of t2 and the equation will be equation 2. Now if you subtract equation 1 from equation 2 and rearrange them, this is the resulting equation ln k2 by k1 is equals to minus ea by r into 1 by t2 minus 1 by t1. This can be further simplified and you will get this final equation. You can use this equation to determine the energy of activation provided you are given the rate constants k2, k1, t1 and t2. The value of r will be given to you as it is a constant. So this is the equation that you are going to learn and you are going to use for solving for energy of activation. Here is a sample problem for you. We are attempting to determine the energy of activation. If the temperature of the reaction system is increased by increased from 300 Kelvin to 310 Kelvin, the rate of the reaction is doubled. Value of R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. What is the value of energy of activation? So here you are given the two temperatures. T1 is 300 Kelvin. T2 is 310 Kelvin. It also states that the rate of the reaction doubles when the temperature increases by 10 degrees which means the ratio of K2 by K1 is going to be 2. Language is very important here. So that's the implied meaning. So if I say the rate of the reaction doubles, the ratio K2 by K1 is going to be 2. R is given. 
we have to calculate energy of activation and we know the equation to pick. So once you have the equation, you're going to substitute the values K2 by K, K1 is 2, therefore ln 2 into R, 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole, times 300 into 310 divided by 310 minus 300 Kelvin. Ln 2 is 0 0.6931. Therefore, the final value of energy of activation will be 53594 joules or 53.594 kilojoules. That's it for now. You can actually use the same equation and even determine the K value for a different temperature provided you know the energy of activation. If you like the video, please don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.